Did you make any adjustments Sunday to kind of ignite the offense a little bit? Uh, we changed some lines, found some cohesiveness with some of those lines. Some of the bigger bodies came up and played in those top six and created some room for some of the other guys, which was good. So these are things that you feel good about going forward, or you're still going to be kind of tweaking things the rest of the way here? No. I mean, I think it's, you know, I, I thought that looked good, and hopefully we can stick with that here for a while. How would you say the guys are handling the pressure right now of crunch time with you know so much at stake every game out? Uh, good, good. I think they're, they've got a good demeanor. They're in a positive frame of mind. And, yeah, we're ready to go. We saw uh, Ryder Rolson on the ice for the first time in, uh, in full contact mode, I guess, here today. What can he bring to the team, and what are his best attributes out there? Uh, pace of play. He's intense, uh, competes. Is there a chance he could play, or is that asking too much of a young guy who just arrived a couple weeks ago? Uh, there's always a chance, right? I think it's going to depend a little bit on uh, injuries and where we're at. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, he's part of the group. He's part of the decisions we got to make when you put the lineup together. Um, you know, he hasn't been there all year, so there's a learning curve to kind of, you know, figure out how we're doing things and how we play. Uh, but if he gets through that, then, yeah, always an option. I know he signed the three-year contract, I think it was. So I, I'm guessing the organization looks at him as a big part of next year, what's going to happen here? Yeah, I mean, I think train, that's what training camp's for, right? I think they signed him because they believe he can be an NHL player. And then what he does in training camp up there is going to determine where he's at. If he's here or if he's up there, that's, that's up to him. That later this week, doubleheader against Milwaukee, a team that's already clinched the playoff spot, looking for a top spot in the Central Division. You know, what's that like going into a matchup? Uh, doing a home and home with them this weekend. I love it. I think it's great. I think they're a good hockey team, and uh, we're we're ready for the challenge. Six games to go. What do you look to see out of this group as you guys trying to clutch uh, clutch a playoff spot here? Uh, just the mentality that we had. I thought last game, check first, understand that you know we're starting that end, and I think that uh, bend don't break mentality. I think it's good keeping your composure, which I thought we did last game. Seem Arvid's kind of the guy you're going to ride here in these key games. That goaltender is that correct? And is it? Do you want to get Kudobin just out there to get a little playing time under his belt so that he's ready to go if he needs to be? Well, first of all, I thought Stobbs was really good in Chicago, even though we lost. So right now it's Arvid, and then Jackson's probably the the one B, so to speak, and then we'll go from there. Uh, with Anton, you know, coming in here hasn't been around all year. He's a great guy and veteran that's been around, but. To start here, the young guys are going to get the opportunity first. Uh, Mike, you just overheard first official practice here for the Ice Dogs. How does it feel for being out here in Rockford? Yeah, it feels great. Um, obviously, you know, been here now for, for three weeks, um, you know, and, and the guys have been awesome, you know, welcoming me in so well, not only the guys, but the staff as well. Um, but yeah, like I said, first full practice today out of the yellow jersey felt awesome. How exciting was it to sign that first pro contract, and how hard was it to walk away from Notre Dame? Yeah, um, obviously bittersweet. Um, love my three years there. Um, not only you know the campus, the school, but but just my teammates. You know my teammates. I mean we're a brotherhood. Obviously, the one thing we did pride ourselves on this year was our team culture and how close we were as a group. But um, obviously you know I had a goal in place and, and that was to sign an NHL contract. And you know once the opportunity came along, uh, it was I wasn't passing that up. So. Give us an idea of your style, your game, what, what you think your strengths are and what you can bring to an organization. Yeah, for sure. I think my, my number one strength is my skating, my speed. You know, I think that's what, you know, uh, can set me above all. I think, you know, I use that to my advantage, um, you know, both off offensively and defensively. Um, but the other thing as well is, you know, I like to shoot the puck. Um, and I think just a, a combination of both of those things, you know, makes me a threat. But, you know, my speed and my compete level, my tenacity, um, just kind of being hard to play against, um, that, that's my strength as a player. Obviously, you're joining at such an interesting time with just six regular season games left here with the team. You know, what do you try and do to make an impact in such a short amount of time that you got here? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, they've been together all year, and I'm just kind of, you know, coming in and doing whatever I can to help. Obviously, you know, I'm not too sure what that is yet, um, but you know, whatever they want me to do, I'm, I'm all here. I'm all in for it. You know, obviously, what I want to do is, you know, do anything that I can to help us, you know, win some hockey games, and whether that means, you know, I'm in a little I play, you know, if I play at all. It, do whatever I can to help, you know, so uh, that's the plan. How much do you feel like you've learned already in your short time here, just from the coaches that are available to you guys, both up above and here, and 
and how important are just these final few weeks for you to get you ready for next year? Well, yeah, I mean, I think first and foremost is just, you know, the resources here, you know, just development wise, obviously, you know, when you, you bring in young players, you want to just continue the development model, continue, you know, developing them so that maybe someday they do play in the NHL. But, you know, I think, you know, just being able to, to have the hands on, you know, interaction with the coaches, obviously talking with them, you know, they it's nice, you know, they know me as a player, they've watched me and obviously now I'm here, but it's not like, you know, we're going in dark. It's, you know, they've been watching me. I've been talking to them, you know, even before I got here. So it's just continuing that process and, you know, talking with them and, and you know, them just giving me pointers on little things. And um, yeah, like I said, it's been great and they've helped me so much. Your dad, obviously everybody is aware of what his many accomplishments. Um, is that a big advantage or not really an advantage to have a father who's been there, done that and can maybe teach you some of the inside things about the, being a professional player? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a huge advantage. Um, you know, I, I grew up around the game of hockey. I was around NHL dressing rooms, you know, ever since, you know, I can remember as a kid. Um, and I think just being around the game is what really, you know, drove, drove my passion. You know, obviously, I think one of my biggest strengths as a player is just how much I love the game of hockey. You know, I always want to be out at the rink, always want to be on the ice. And, you know, just, just being able to, to see the habits that the guys had, you know, in the NHL, you know, their day-to-day -day life, just kind of being a young kid around it all and, and the relationships I not only made, you know, with my dad, but other players as well that I still talk to to this day. So I think it's just, it's a huge advantage. You know, I'm not going in blind to things. It's almost like, you know, on the second time around because, you know, I've seen it before. I, I've been around it and now I get to experience it for myself. Are you always bouncing ideas off your dad to get his feedback, or do you, does he kind of step back and just let your coaches do all that? Though? Yeah, I mean, it's it kind of goes both ways. I mean, whenever I you know I need something from him, obviously he's the first guy I ask, and you know he he obviously gives me pointers. He's been through it, and you know I, I take everything he says to heart. But you know he's also harped on the fact that you know this is my time now, and it's time for me to go through it and and you know start my pro journey. So you know I mean he's taking a back seat, you know, in that aspect. So. Um, that's good, but like I said, I mean, he's always there, and I'm always bouncing ideas off of him just because he's been through it before, and, you know, I'm just starting out, and, you know, he's seen it all, so. I assume your three brothers, they're all younger, right? Yeah. They, do they all play hockey? Then? Uh, one of them plays. Oh, yeah, yeah uh, one of them was actually is a freshman at Notre Dame, just a student. Uh, he's doing neuroscience, and then uh, my other brother, he's 11. He loves hockey, but he doesn't like the playing aspect of it, <laughs> so who knows? Maybe see him in a front office someday, but no, yeah, one of them plays, so. Worried about three games in three days that you guys would have anything left in the tank on Sunday, and obviously you did. Where, where, where did you guys find that to be able to bounce back the way you did on Sunday? Yeah, I think uh, obviously the first two games we didn't get the result we wanted, um, but I think we talked about it before. It's that's part of it. It's part of the league, part of the game, and you gotta. It doesn't matter if you win or lose. You just kind of kind of turn the page and, and focus on the next one. And um, I think we're all aware of what's going on right now with the playoff scene and and where teams are and who's trying to catch who. So I think it's, uh, it's important just kind of focus with what we're doing and focus on in our locker room, just take it game by game. Goals were hard to come by in the previous two games. You got shut out and then you come back with a big game Sunday. Did, did you guys make some sort of adjustment on the offensive end or just the, the way you were attacking? Anything different Sunday to kind of recapture that offense? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we were doing some good things in the first two games. I just don't think we were maybe consistent with it. So. Uh, and I think also, you know, you get some bounces, you know, Philbert had a nice goal there. And then even my mind was kind of just a loose puck in front. So I think you start playing with a little more confidence, start making some plays that, you know, maybe you're not making when, when those pucks aren't going in. Um, so I think it's just, I think we just got to focus on trying to play with the lead. Usually we're in, we're in better shape when, when we score the first goal. And on an individual level, you know, what sort of sparked for you to get two goals, you know, in, in the net there on Sunday against Grand Rapids? Uh, I don't know if there was necessarily one thing. Um, we shuffled some stuff around, and I was playing center. I haven't played center. I played a little in Chicago this year, but not too much this year uh, with uh, with Rockford. So um, I don't know. I think you know Dave, and the, especially the first one, Hardy going harder than that, and that's part of his game. And I was just you know in the area and was able to put it home. So I think a lot of credit goes to goes to uh, Hardy there, and and then uh, yeah, I think it's just. You know, you're going to have your nights, you're going to have your off nights. I think, you know, you just got to, you know, you got to have a B game too. You can't always play your best, but you don't want to, you don't want to have a huge fall off. So um, I think that's something I focus on on a personal level. And then, and then I think uh, as a team, we can focus more on that too. And looking at the past couple of weeks, you know, two shutouts over the weekend, then a win on Sunday, Manitoba the week prior, you guys have a nice overtime win. They kind of get blown out the next game. How do you guys find consistency at such a crucial time when you guys are 
sort of playing at a level like that? Yeah, uh, like I said earlier, I think it's just a game to game. It's easy to kind of get ahead of yourself, and especially in a three on three, uh, you know, with energy levels that, that I find always the second game is maybe the hardest just because it's, you know, you're already a little tired and you just got another game to go. So I think it's just focusing on, you know, winning every shift and, and, uh, and just kind of turning the page whenever you can. And, um, and every team's going through this. It's not just us. We're not the only team playing three and threes or, you know, playing tired at times. So, um, yeah, I think it's just, it's just trying to stay within yourself and, and just uh, do whatever you can every shift. And then big news for you, last week you signed that contract extension to be here through 2024. You know, what led you to want to sign the dotted line there? Yeah, I mean, we have such a great group here and um, the organization in general. Uh, you know, it's Chicago and Rockford, two great places to play, great places to live. And whenever you can be a part of an original six organization, I think that's, uh, you know, a huge feather in, in anyone's cap. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be back and, uh, you know, and I, you know, knowing some other guys who, who signed here before me too. and and that sort of thing. And I think there's going to be opportunities in, in Rockford and Chicago, you know, moving forward. And um, so on a personal note, I'm just, you know, happy to be a part of it and happy to, uh, to be back next year. As you explained earlier, you're, you guys are well aware of the playoff situation where everything stands right now. So how do you deal with the pressure of that, knowing how critical these games are and not play too tight out there on the ice? Yeah, I think it's st sticking together as a group. Um, you know, we had a lot of turnover over kind of the uh, – um, uh, the trade deadline, you know, we lost some some key guys, and we also brought in some key members too. So, uh, like I said, every team's going through it, and um, I think it's just coming together as a group. We're not, no one's going to help us. No one feels bad for us, and if we're gonna if we're gonna have uh, success, I think we just got to come together and and find a way with with the group we have. I don't think you guys have played Milwaukee since like February twelfth or something like. It. It's been quite a while. What are you expecting out of them this weekend? And they're right there battling for the division championship. So are you anticipating they're going to come in here, you know, giving it all they've got? Yeah, I think uh, they're a team we've had some good battles with this year. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know too many guys, but I, I assume they probably don't want to, you know, they'd be one of the teams that wouldn't want us to make the playoffs. So they're going to probably do everything they can to, to kind of put a stop in that. And, uh, you know, we can use that as motivation too. We, you know, it doesn't matter who we're playing against, but especially a team like that or, or a team we're trying to chase to, to jump ahead of them in the, in the you know, in the, the standings. I think you take a little more pride in that, and uh, we'll be ready to go on Friday for sure. How'd you do in the bracket pool? The March Madness? I was towards the bottom, so <laughs> fastball's not really my sport. <laughs> who, uh, who came out on top? I think uh, Parat did. Yeah, I think the UConn game was, uh, I think, maybe Dave, if, if it would have went the other way, the semifinal game there, he was... Uh, so we were talking about, you know, what, what hedging you should do, and we were way off. So poor Dave, I think he lost a little money. <laughs> did, uh, did, did Kale have the? Did Kale have UConn winning the whole thing? I think he did. Uh, I think he might have come second now that they they came that they won it. Uh, but I think maybe Parade. I think he he clipped him by one. But. <laughs>